still, are we about ready? Or give it a couple minutes. Uh, oh, is Eddie's there? Yes. Okay, I guess, um, I guess we had a couple more minutes since we're a little, it's still, if we, Eddie, Eddie can wait a couple more minutes since it's yeah. All right. 112 right now. I just want to give a few, few more minutes to everyone get connected. No problem. Thank you. Okay, everyone, it's uh, now 1.15, so we'll, we'll get started uh, with hitting Coach Eddie Smith. He had to go change the schedule real quick on okay. the boards in here, so Thank he'll you. be back in like one okay. minute. As soon as Eddie's back, we'll, we'll, um, we'll get started. And if you guys just want to indicate that you have a question in the chat, and we'll just follow the order of the, of the chat for, for the questions. So first up, when Eddie gets settled, first up will be Wilson Alexander. All right, uh, hitting coach Eddie Smith is now uh, ready for your question. So we'll start first with Wilson. Hey, Eddie, good to see you. It's Wilson from The Advocate. Hope you're doing well. Thanks, um, Wilson, good to see you. These, all these home runs that y'all are hitting, now 15 through the first seven games, SEC you know, lead in that category. Is that coming from the aggressive mindset that you and Paul wanted to instill in these hitters or is it something else that's creating all this power? Yeah, I think the guys are doing a good job of, you know, staying on the attack at the plate. I think that's been a, a point of emphasis uh, from day one. I think the last five games, you've uh, seen some guys really take that on in the game and um, hope to keep that rolling. Hey, Coach, how have you seen Cade Doty step up recently, especially compared to what he was doing last year? And he just seems to finally be coming into his own this season. He really does, and uh, I think when you go back and look at what Kay Doty did last year, he hit a really loud 268 or whatever it was. Uh, a lot of barrels, and um, you know, um, this year I think he has been on the barrel a lot, and they've started to fall. And um, he really is coming on as a player. It's exciting to see that. 
Hey, Coach, this is uh, Glenn West with the LSU Country. Hope you're doing well. Um, you know, Paul talked to, to us, you know, I think after the second or third game, you know, about a conversation that he had with you and then you had with the hitters about just being more aggressive at the plate. Um, I was wondering just what the genesis of that conversation was you had with the hitters and just kind of how do you think they've obviously taken it uh, to, to, to heart, you know, these last, you know, four or five games for you guys? I think we simplified some things. Um, I, I think that uh, – you know, we've just taken on maybe more of what, what I like to call an animal instinct. You know, you're on the attack uh, when you see, um, you know, a great white shark on the Discovery Channel going to get its dinner. It's not sitting there and thinking about, well, hey, is that seal going to be swimming right or left? It's just going to get the seal. It's staying on the attack. And, uh, you know, that's an image and a graphic that we like to use with our players all the time. Hey, when the tiger's in the jungle hunting, it's not calculating anything. It's going for the attack. And, you uh, you know, I think um, that, that's been the gist of things is just really trying to create uh, an attacking mindset, impose our will and, um, you know, try to hit the ball as hard as you possibly can. Back to me, Eddie, Paul said that you've been in his ear a little bit about Gavin and just, you know, throughout the preseason, throughout, even when Gavin kind of got a slow couple of games to start the year that, you know, it's going to come for him. What creates for you that confidence? You know, why did you believe in Gavin so much and what he was capable of doing this year? Well, I think that what I see from Gavin is he hits balls uh, as hard as anybody we have, uh, as often as anybody that we have. And, um, you know, I think when you look at what he did in a really shortened season last year, that started to show, um, you know, as the sample size got a little bit bigger, um, you know, and I think that when you look at what he did all fall and what he did all spring for us in preseason scrimmages, he just hits balls harder than anybody else. And I think that, um, you know, baseball is a tough balance. It, it's a balance of you got to win right now. You got to go get it done right now. But it's also a game that uh, it comes down to the law of averages. And I'm a big blackjack player. And, uh, you know, I, I think that when you have a guy who's who's hit balls as hard as he hits balls, as often as he hits balls, it's something that, you know, if the dealer deals you a 10, you might lose a few hands, but hey, keep dealing me that 10 dealer, you know, and that's what I've seen out of, of Gavin Dugas. He just hits a lot of balls really hard. Hey, Eddie, hope you're doing good today. Um, I know you talked about how the, the bats already had a turning point, but it seemed like specifically in the bottom of the sixth to so the fifth against LA Tech is when it really started to come alive. What do you think changed from that moment that the Grand Slam came and ever since then they've been really consistent as far as getting hits and runs? Yeah, Jared, you know, I think hitting is contagious, man. You know, it's it's such a, um, you know, you, you see it done and then all of a sudden you start believing. And, um, you know, I really go back to the leadoff hitter in that inning, Cade Beloso, uh, had a really good at bat, line drive single up the middle, and we pieced together a lot of at bats from that point forward. And, I, I really think it's a contagious thing and uh, it's so much about belief. It's so much about confidence that when that starts coming, some special things can happen. And, uh, you know, our guys did a really good job of just continuing to attack and continuing to, to work to impose their will um, throughout the week after that inning. Eddie, I'm, I apologize if you've already answered this, but I am assuming that you haven't changed your mental philosophy or philosophy in general on hitting from last year to this year. So why is it working now versus last year? Are they, are the kids picking it up better? Are they seeing things different? Is it competition? Why is it working to a T now? Well, I think that, um, you know, you're, you're exactly right, Matt, when it comes to the philosophy that hasn't changed. I think one thing that, uh, you know, specifically this last week, we've just done a really good job of, ignoring the noise and staying so focused on attacking, on having a mindset of going to get it, uh, not wanting the game to come to us, but we got to go get it. And then I think the second piece of that answer, it, it's real, um, it, it, it comes down to guys that are in our lineup, um, you know, they, they just look a little bit different. I think you can credit Nolan Kane a lot with that. If you understand, you know, the college recruiting cycle um, with, you know, the power five schools, the top of the top schools, um, players start committing in their freshman year and the best of the best players are committing as freshmen. And if you look at the timeline of that, um, I, I think Nolan Kane and this freshman class, both on the mound and at the plate, 
um, it, it's really kind of the first class where he really got to go and recruit the freshmen in high school, which is when the best of the best are playing. And you're just seeing guys in that class that uh, their bodies just work a little different. Because, too, I, I think in that Nichols game, it was Jordan's home run where I think the guy started him off with two straight fastballs at, like, 89 right over the heart of the plate. And I think last year guys would have been – overthinking that waiting for a breaking ball or something else and the guy threw it again and Jordan hits it out of the ballpark I mean are you simplifying at bats for these guys or like you said is it just the kind of kids that are coming in here now I think it's a combination of both I, I really do I mean one of my favorite sayings as a hitting coach is stop thinking start hitting you know and that is hey when you're in that batter's box we're, we're going to do a lot of preparation in the off season and even a little bit pre-game and that sort of thing. But when you're in that batter's box, you got to shut off the mind and let your instincts take over. And, uh, you know, that has been a big influence or a big point of focus here the last, uh, the last week of, of that attacking mindset. And, um, you, you know, it always works better when, uh, w when the players have the athleticism and, and ability that the players have for us. Hey, Coach, I was also just wondering, you know, obviously, you know, you mentioned a little bit about that freshman class, but, also, you know, part of that class is Dylan Cruz and, and Trey Morgan. And uh, just what have you seen from them and their early approach and their just, you know, it just seems like it's come so natural to them, um, you know, in the early going here. Just, just how, how good can they be as hitters, uh, you know, over the next couple of years? Yeah, <laughs> it's exciting. There's no doubt. I, I will never forget uh, the first day this fall that we worked out. I, I went home that night and uh, I, I, I had a a little bit of hop in my step that whole night you know I was pretty excited about these guys and um, you know as coaches obviously you get excited in the off season about talent potential and those sort of things um, and, and you know you mentioned Dylan and Trey both of those guys are elite there, there's no question about that when it comes to talent and potential but really it's when the lights come on that you have your your true answer to what these players are like and uh you know, so far the lights coming on, they've only gotten better. And that's what the great players do. And, um, you know, hoping that continues from them is that uh, they continue to shine. And, um, you know, with their talent and, you know, the way that they carry themselves, they carry themselves with the confidence, they carry themselves with the mindset of, uh, you know, going on the attack and wanting to earn it every single day in their preparation. And uh, can't say enough about the maturity of, of both of those guys. Hey, Coach, has anybody surprised you this season? And also talk about what Trey Morgan brings to the table, because obviously he's not hitting bombs, but he is on base almost every at bat. Just talk about that. You know, Chessa, surprises. Um, I, I wouldn't say there's been anything that's been too shocking. Um, you know, once the, the games have come, it's been um, what we'd hoped for with, with with the players, um, you know, I think that the maybe surprises have been, hey, when they showed up in the fall, we knew they were pretty good. We knew that they were pretty good players and had a chance to be special. But, uh, you know, I think there was maybe a, a, even another level of play that they showed when they showed up in the fall, when we're talking about these freshmen from Dylan to Trey, you know, Brody Drost, and, and I'm gonna also throw, you know, Will Safford and Jordan Thompson in that group. Um, all, all of them, very, very strong freshmen, um, you know, and when it comes to Trey, uh, I'll tell you, he's just a really fun player to be around every single day. He brings a great enthusiasm, a great balance of poise, but energy at the same time. I, I love the way he goes to the plate every single time and just competes. It's him against the pitcher and he wants to find a way to win. And obviously in this sport, you're not going to find a way to win every time. If you find a way to win almost half the time, you know, whether that's a hit or getting on base some other way, then, then you're a Hall of Famer. And so, um, you, you know, the way he goes about it, it it's really, really unique and uh, just love being around him. There's no doubt. Glad he's in our uniform. Eddie, as well as y'all are hitting right now, is there anything that you want to see improved kind of going in over the next few weeks into SEC play? And if so, how do you kind of go about doing that? Well, baseball is just a game of consistency. And, um, you know, the, the question that, that remains is, hey, how consistent can we be? Can we bring this energy every single day? Um, 
you know, the, the wind's going to be blowing in this week. Last week it was blowing out. That has a big factor in the game of baseball, probably a bigger factor than we make it out to be. Uh, hey, can we continue to stay attacking? Can we continue to stay confident? And can we find ways to win in all conditions? You know, um, we, we got to find, you know, a different way to win a little bit this week, most likely just because of the environment that we're going to be playing in. And great teams do that. And uh, we got to go out and find a way to do that here this week. Eddie, I know you were, you, you had just mentioned about, you know, turning the brain off and, and blocking out the noise and stuff. Did you hear all the stuff about what people were saying about the LSU hitters last year? And if you did, did it motivate you individually, specifically for this season, especially with all the talent that you have? Uh, I, I mean, I don't know what was said. I, I mean, I'm a sports fan. I know how sports fans are. Um, it, it's something where, you know, I make it a point not to, to listen to the noise because what I could control, it's, uh, it's my interactions with the players every single day. But I will say that I sat, uh, you know, in, uh, in my house, in this room I have that has a cool view out the window and every morning sat there and just sort of dwelled a little bit upon where we were as an offense last year throughout the entire quarantine. And no, it didn't sit well with me at all. You know, there's no doubt about that. And um, so, you know, there's some motivation. Um, I think there's always motivation. And I think more than anything, we just got to keep going forward with the same energy and attacking mindset and uh, go take what's ours here as we go forward. Okay. We'll uh, go ahead and wrap up. If, if we're all good with Eddie, we'll go ahead and uh, allow him to, Head to practice. Thank you very much, Eddie. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> Next up is will be uh, Drew Bianco. All right, Drew is in position. So we'll go ahead. again. If you just indicate that you have a question in the chat, and we'll follow the chat order for questions for Drew. And we'll start with Wilson. Hey, Drew, Wilson Alexander from The Advocate. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. If you could, you know, what was it like for you on uh, just the other day, being able to go up there and hit two home runs in one game, especially considering that, you know, at a time last summer, it seemed like you might not be back here. What was it like for you emotionally being able to do that? Um, it felt really good um, just to, I mean, have a successful day at the plate and then also help the team win. Um, especially getting some redemption uh, after Nichols kind of embarrassed us last year or whatever. And, but yeah, I wouldn't say I was too emotional uh, about like not being back here or whatever. Uh, Cause once I decided to come back here, like all thoughts and all that just kind of went out the window and I was just focused on this team and having a good year and trying to reach Omaha and everything. Drew, Eddie was talking about his approach that he, he gives to you guys, obviously, every single day when he's working with you. Can you just take us through what an LSU hitter is, is thinking now when they get in the box and, and what he's brought to you guys this year, if at all different from last season? Uh, yeah, um, Eddie's done a great job uh, with us this year. And to be honest, I think, I mean, you can definitely look at the numbers when the flip kind of switched after that loss from Air Force. And some of us were down and we, we hadn't, I don't think we hit bad, but we weren't hitting what we thought we could hit. And then uh, I think Eddie and Coach Maneri did a great job after that loss. Uh, we, they weren't really down. They came out BP and uh, you expect coaches to be in, you know, not the best mood after losing a game like that, but they were in a great mood and they just encouraged us. They're like, Hey, let's go out there and just let it rip. And uh with, you know, less than two strikes, I want to see y'all swinging hard and aggressive, getting the barrel out and stop with this passive stuff. And like first, he goes first round of BP. I want to see how many home runs you can hit. And ever since then, I think we've, we've gone out with that mindset every at bat, less than two strikes, get your swings off and uh, not just trying to hit home runs, but just drive baseballs in the gaps and gets hits and hit the ball hard. And that just leads to home runs. Uh, and then with two strikes, he's like, then we got to switch it to a different mindset of just battle. It's you versus the pitcher. And that he's big on that. And it's just, it's not, you know, us versus Nichols. It's you versus that pitcher 60 feet, six inches away with two strikes. And are you going to beat him or is he going to beat you? And you got to go up there and try to win that battle for your team. 
And I think with that mindset, we've been hitting uh, a lot better, and you can you can see it. Hey, Drew, this is uh, Glenn West, LSU Country. Hope you're doing well, man. Um, you know, just, you know, kind of piggybacking off of that, you know, last year at this time, you know, it was, you know, a bit of a struggle for you guys from an offensive standpoint. And I'm just curious, you know, obviously you have a bunch of new players and stuff, but what do you think's changed maybe from last year to this year and just why you guys have come out like gangbusters this year and are really, you know, slapping the ball over the field? Um, I think the biggest change is just our attitude, really. Um, I mean – I mean, we do have new players, and so these freshmen are unbelievable. Dylan and Trey have been playing great, and that's definitely a key too. But I think just the mindset really is, you know, less than two strikes. Let's let's you know let's drive the baseball and hit like how we've always hit, and then two strikes, then we can get into the you know battle mode and all that. I think last year we kind of just not that we look at the like the media and all that stuff, but like, you know, when you're not hitting good at, you know, you're thinking about it, you know, you're over your last six, you start, I mean, it's just human nature that you're going to start thinking about things like that. And you start maybe being a little bit more hesitant. And then this year after the air force loss, I think that really just said, Hey, we're not going back into that mindset. We're, we're good enough to be here. Uh, we're good enough to hit and we can really hit, especially preseason. Everybody was, all the news was on our pitching, which it should be. Our, we probably have one of the best staffs in the country, especially with the bullpen and the starters. And not much about the question mark was the hitters. And I think maybe the you know first game jitters, and then the second game it's like oh maybe our hitters really aren't we're not, maybe we aren't that good. And then I think we just said no, we are good enough, and we came out there confident. And that's why I think it is is just confidence. I mean, hitting is I mean you got to have the talent, but you wouldn't be here if we didn't have the talent. So we just got to go up there with confidence, and I feel like we have been doing that really well. See, Jerry, you're up next. Jerry Joseph. Oh. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Last year, piggybacking and going back for a second about you talked about y'all struggled against Nichols last season, but this season y'all came out of the gate and really gave it to Terry on. They had to pull him early in the game. What really was the difference this year compared to last year, Thibodeau? Um, I think the difference was, you know, we – uh. We weren't swinging at his pitches. You know, a pitcher like that, uh, Terry, he's going to throw a lot of strikes, and he doesn't have the best stuff to uh, really get you out. You know, it's not 94 from the left side with a uh, wipeout slider. It's, it's more he's just commanding the zone, and he's going to try to pitch you backwards and make you hit at his pace and uh, make, make you swing at bad pitches and get yourself out. I think that's what we did last year. We were just uh, swinging at his pitches and getting ourselves out mostly, uh, not to take anything away from him. I mean, he, he – shoved last year but then this year I feel like you know we were uh we were hitting our pitches and we were dropping you know we were waiting for our pitches and not getting ourselves out and I think that was the biggest difference was uh us just uh staying with our plan our mindset and hitting the pitches that we wanted to hit and not uh falling for you know his pitches hey Drew I know we've been talking about Eddie's approach with the hitters but he said something that really stuck out just a minute ago talking about how they've simplified some things but saying he is an animal instinct now that he's working with you guys to stay on the attack just what have those conversations been like with him specifically when he says that animal instinct yeah he gets uh he and he's a pretty calm guy but sometimes uh you, we all lock it in and once he kind of gets a, you can see that look and uh, the way he starts talking is a little different uh i mean i can't say exactly what he says but it definitely fires us up and uh gets us ready and uh I think that's another thing uh, what was huge for us was just having him believe in us and saying, like, hey, y'all are good enough. You know, I want you to attack and be aggressive. Like, go out there and, like, have fun. And, like, you – and I think that's another big reason of the different success this year is just uh, just the attitude. Not only are we confident, but we're just having fun out there. I mean, you come out and watch practices or before games, we're all fired up. Uh, I mean, uh, Beloso, his big thing is hop on the vibe train. I mean, we're just having fun. And – Winning's part of that. You're going to have a lot of fun when you're winning. But uh, even when, like, right after the Air Force game we lost, we still had the same, you know, have fun, just go out there and compete. And I think that's just uh, good teams, even when they're not winning, they're still having fun. And, uh, and it's going to lead to get over the hump. And I think that's what we've been doing. And Eddie's done a great job with his attitude this year, just leading us in that uh, good vibe uh, moment. Drew, also something that Paul and now both Eddie have mentioned that helps with all the home runs over the last few weeks is the weather. 
how much is there to be said about that? I mean, do you think that as a hitter that that has helped, that it's been unseasonably warm, that the wind's been blowing out of the ballpark? Oh, yeah, no doubt. Uh, I mean, that's something that I feel like isn't talked about enough is how weather can dictate a game when it's freezing cold outside, 28 degrees, wind's blown in. Uh, there's probably not going to be a lot of offense that day. Uh, but it's been really hot here and the wind's been blown out. I feel like that's uh, one of the reasons why we've had success. I mean, I love every, every hitter's dream is to show up the ballpark and it's 70 degrees and the wind's gushing out. Uh, but some days that's not going to happen next week. It's supposed to be uh, blowing in. So that's when I don't really feel like we need to switch our mindset from what we're doing, but uh, there probably won't be as many home runs uh, that, that this weekend, but uh, yeah, weather really dictates how, how an offense goes. But even when the wind's blowing in, we have some of the best pitchers in the country that I feel like, you know, we can still win those low scoring games. Okay. Andrew, I just have, I'm sorry, I have just one more quick. Um, you, you mentioned the weather conditions. How much does an approach, you know, change when the wind's blowing in? I mean, do you guys focus more on going opposite field? Is it just line drives? I mean, just how do you, you know, kind of change up your approach a little bit to maybe not thinking home runs and power, but just contact and getting the ball out? you know, to outfield somewhere. Yeah, uh, on days when the wind's blowing in, it's cold. I wouldn't say our whole mindset changes because you can't really do that as a hitter. Uh, it's definitely more of a low line drive ground ball, but you still want to hit the ball hard. I mean, I feel like that's our biggest approach is, yeah, we've hit a lot of home runs this year and that's great, but I don't think we we all go up to the plate saying, oh, let's hit another home run. It's more like, hey, let's hit, hit the middle of the baseball, hit it hard and uh, see what happens. And we've lifted some balls in the air that have carried out. And I say, I think we'll keep that same mindset. And then if it gets a little uh, mid game, uh, if we're hitting too many fly balls, uh, Eddie and Coach Maneri do a great job of like calling us up and saying, hey, maybe we need to hit, uh, start hitting maybe a little on top of the ball and uh, just overthink that a little bit. And then we'll start hitting line drives and hard ground balls to the thing. But I wouldn't say it changes completely. There's definitely a little adjustment, but not, not the big, not a big, big adjustment. Drew, I do think this is the first time that we've gotten to talk to you since last year. So if you could just take us through that process during the summer, what ended up you know, bringing you back to LSU after you were in the transfer portal for a little bit? Uh, yeah, definitely a weird summer. Uh, not a summer that uh, you ever want to have, but uh, I mean, I'm glad it happened and it motivated me to do a lot of things. Uh, Enter the portal, was just looking for other options. Uh, not necessarily like I was done with LSU, but I uh, just wanted – I talked to Coach Maneri, and uh, we thought it would be best just to see what what other options were out there for me. And then I think I was in it for like a month, and uh, just uh, talking to my dad and my parents, and I told them, like, I really don't want – even if I didn't play baseball, I'd, I wouldn't want to leave LSU just because of the culture and everything here. I just love going to school here but I think I, I can make a difference and play. I'm good enough to play at LSU and I don't want to leave that. And uh, I felt like that'd be quitting if I went somewhere else and uh, just started something new. So I, uh, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to come back and compete and try to win another spot here. And uh, so I talked to coach Panera and he said, he'd love to have me back. Uh, I just have to make some adjustments to my swings. And then I told him uh, I played outfield all last year. I told him uh, I was going to lose some weight and be able to play in the infield again just to open up more positions for me, knowing that we were going to have a stacked outfield. And so uh, just really, uh, I think it was eye-opening going in the portal and doing all that just because it uh, kind of motivated me uh, to just go out and, you know, get better in all phases of the game. And I think the, uh, the, it really helped me out in the long run. <clears throat> How much weight did you end up losing? Uh, 22 pounds. I was like 223 uh, last year, and now I'm like 198 to 200. What'd you do to lose all that weight? Uh, I ran a lot, but it was more just uh, not really eating so, eating so much, you know, stop the late night Sonic runs and stuff like that. Uh, and then I played a lot of basketball and just like working out with my brothers over the, I mean, uh, Corona break definitely had its down downsides, uh, you know, baseball shutting down, all of these tragic things happened, but uh, also like gave you a lot of time to hang with your family. My brother is that I don't really get to see that much. And so uh, growing up, uh, having a big family like that, me and my brother is just working out together, hitting, uh, running and 
playing like pickup basketball games and stuff like that. So definitely uh, it was great for that. And I think uh, having that like those three or four months to really do nothing, I took advantage of that to, you know, get better. Drew, who has the best jump shot on this team? Uh, ooh, I really don't want to say me because that would make me look selfish. But I mean, me and Garrett Edwards go back and forth about this. And then AD loves, loves tripping in and saying that Garrett could beat me one on one. Uh, but I guess I'll go with Garrett just to stay humble. But when we, after we, uh, the season's over, hopefully we bring home a national championship. I already told Garrett we need to go to the URAC and play one on one. But, uh, definitely we, we bring that discussion up a lot, basketball talk, but, uh, it's all funny games and we'll, hopefully we'll, we'll see, uh, after the season's over. All right. Good deal. Thank you very much, Drew. No problem. And uh, our final uh, participant will be Coach Maneri when he uh, comes in. We'll get started. You want me to go get him? Um, yeah, just, just, give, just give him a heads up that, that Drew's finished. Okay. Thank you. Coach is uh, watching Zach Hess pitch in the big leagues right now, so give him like five to ten minutes. Okay, thank you. Well, while we're waiting, I can tell you that um, Garrett Edwards is LSU's scheduled starting pitcher for the game tomorrow night versus Nichols. And Nichols' starting pitcher is – Right-hander Chase Gearing. Chase Gearing is Nichols' starter, and Garrett Edwards will be the LSU starter for tomorrow night. Oh, I'm so, correct. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm getting my freshman mixed up. Our starting pitcher tomorrow night is Javen Coleman. Sorry about that. LSU starter versus Nichols tomorrow night is left-hander Javen Coleman. So Coleman for LSU and Gearing for Nichols.
All right, coach is here. Hi, Bill. Hey, Paul, thank you for joining us. Let's see, uh, we'll go ahead and start with Wilson. Hey, Paul, how are you doing today? Sorry to keep you all waiting. I was watching Zach Hess pitching in a major league game. Well, that must have been very exciting for you. Um, for starters here, just uh, Kay Doty, what have you all found out about his shoulder injury? And is he going to miss much time? I do, do not have an update other than to tell you that at um, a little after 12 today, they were doing a um, procedure to, to test it, what they call an arthrogram. So we'll know more this afternoon once the results of that come back. And, and let me make it clear to everybody, you know, that um, the description that I gave the other day about in a celebration probably was a little misleading. Uh, I'm going to describe to you what he did. He was sitting, Bianco hit the home run. He jumped out of his seat and went like this with his arms up in the air. And somebody that was standing behind him just bumped into him, into his back of his shoulder, just bumped into him. It was just like an innocent thing like that, but just kind of hit his shoulder in such an awkward way that it sent a pain through his left shoulder. And I don't know if you all know what a sublex dislocation is, where it pops out and then pops back in. And, and that's, that's what happened to him. So it's a, uh, you know, it just really scared the kid and was very painful. And it was the most freakish thing. It wasn't like some exorbitant, you know, you know how they do those bashes when guys hit home. It wasn't anything like that. It wasn't anything extraordinary at all. All he did, all he was doing was raising his arms as his teammate hit a home run and it just, somebody accidentally bumped into him. And, and uh, you know, the, I know the kid was just in an awful lot of pain when it happened. And, um, you know, our, our, our uh, orthopedic surgeon came out from his home to check him out at the field that night and seemed cautiously optimistic that there was no, nothing serious there. So, um, you know, today they scheduled a, you know, this procedure just to check it out to make sure. And uh, we'll, we'll have the results hopefully later today sometime. And hopefully it's just, something that maybe just traumatized it a little bit and is nothing too serious. And, you know, that's, that's what we're keeping our fingers crossed for. Okay. Chris Hagan. Hey coach, how you doing? Who's that you talking? Chris oh. from Fox 8 New Orleans. How you doing? Oh, there coach? you are. Okay, Chris. Okay. Um, I was wanted to ask you about a guy like Trey Morgan. What can you say about the start to the year that that he's had, um, you know, as a freshman? And I know the pitching gets tougher as the schedule goes on, but just to have this this base and the success early, what does that do for a guy like him? Chris, I don't know much more I can say about Trey than I've already said about him. I mean, everybody knows how much I think of this kid. He's he's been amazing. He's been amazing from the day he walked on campus. You know, uh, I I. I really had no idea that he was this good. Uh, he's, he's just been a phenomenal all around player for us. He's got a tremendous attitude, work ethic, intelligence, uh, gamer, and then his skills have been, you know, just phenomenal. It's not often that you begin talking about a first baseman because of his defensive talent, but his defensive talent, has probably already saved us at least a half a dozen errors, if not more. And when you look up at the scoreboard, whether you knock in the runs or whether you save the runs, the whole idea is run differential. You want to score more runs than the other team. So it helps you win games, whether you're saving runs or knocking them in. And oh, by the way, he's a pretty good hitter too. Uh, and you know he's batted either second or three or two hole or three hole for us in every game. And uh, he hits righties, he hits lefties. He doesn't strike out very much. He handles the bat. Uh, he, he's done everything. And by the way, the pitching we have faced has not been very bad at all. Um, I know they're not the name opponents that people are used to seeing on our schedule. You know, we've, we've had to gerrymander our schedule just to try to get games. But I can tell you the pitching that we have faced has been pretty good. 
um, you know, certainly the SEC is, is going to be a notch up, but it's not like, you know, we're facing guys throwing underhanded out there. We, fa we have faced some quality pitching and, and, uh, you know, all of our guys really have really ro risen up and, and Trey has been one of them, you know, his base hit the other day in the, I think it was in the seventh or eighth inning when we were, it was a two to one game and two outs and he stepped up and got a big RBI single. Uh, he's he, listen, he's hit a lot of ball. I think he's hitting 370 or something. He easily could be leading the team and hitting. He had an 0 for six game where he easily could have had five hits in the game. He had five balls right on the screws and had nothing to show for it against Louisiana Tech. And I mean, five, five balls were hit as hard as he could hit them. So with a little bit of luck, he could be hitting almost 500. He, he's going to continue to get better because he has a great work ethic. He has a lot of pride, uh, very coachable. He's got everything that you ask for in a player. And he's gonna have a great career here at LSU. Hey coach, we had Eddie on earlier and he was just talking about the approach these hitters have now. And looking back at last year is, are these hitters obviously a direct reflection of him? And what I mean is that last year seemed like a lot of pressing was going on. And I know the fans were upset with the expectations that Eddie came in here with. And has he, is he more like stress-free now this year? And, and are you seeing that with these hitters? And how has he dealt with everything from last year to this year? Matt, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. Um, obviously when a person is, is new, there's an adjustment period. Um, but Eddie is an outstanding coach. He's proven that he's, he's no spring chicken. I mean, this guy has been around the game. Uh, you know, everybody thinks, so. Oh, coach Maneri just hired him because he's a former player of his. I didn't hire him because he's a former player of mine. He, I hired him because he's an outstanding coach and he's proven that at everywhere he's been. And I knew he'd come here and do a tremendous job. Um, you know, last year, uh, you know, we had, some guys that, that uh, you know, swung and missed a lot. Um, we had some guys that, that were a little bit set in their ways. Um, we had some days where the wind was blowing straight in and it was very cold. Uh, we had some days where, where, you know, the climatal conditions just defeated, you know, our ability to, to hit good, um, not to take anything away from our opponents. Uh, when we when we didn't you know hit the ball very well over at Nickel State last year, there was a very very stiff wind blowing from the left field corner, kind of towards the first base line, and we hit two or three balls, crushed Bianco crushed a ball last year against the same pitcher that we faced the other day, but it it just died about mid left field because of the wind. When we played Eastern Kentucky last year on a Friday night, there was no way you could hit a ball out of the ballpark. It was freezing. Um, you know, when we played it at, in the ballpark in Houston on Sunday against Oklahoma, the, the air was just dead. We, we hit two or three balls to the warning track where the ball just died. You know, it was a, just a heavy air. So sometimes the climate conditions pl play into it. And, and certainly the, you know, the caliber of the player. We, ha we have some special freshmen this year that have come in and made a big difference. And not only have they, not only do they have talent, but they've been very, very coachable. You know, I, I talked just a minute ago about Trey Morgan. And I, could, and I could say the same thing about Dylan Cruz. And I could say the same thing about Brody Drost and, and, and uh, Jordan uh, Thompson. Not only are they talented players, but they're very coachable. And, the, and, and they're very poised for freshmen. You know, they, they've, they've been in this quote unquote, the circuit, if you know what I mean, coming in, they, they, they have these showcases now and these travel squads and, you know, these kids play against great competition before they ever come to college. So they've seen 92 to 95 miles an hour coming, coming through those programs. And so when they get here, you know, it's not so awe-inspiring for them. And, uh, you know, we're very fortunate that these kids came to school. And so, you know, I feel like, you know, we've, we've upgraded, you know, the talent level across the board. I think Eddie's coaching them great. I think Eddie's very comfortable with what he's doing with them and, that, and, 
and um, the climatal conditions have been favorable. I think there's been a combination of a lot of things that have, you know, I think the first weekend we were a little bit tentative. The first two days, I should say, against the Air Force, we were a little bit tentative, thinking a little bit too much. And then after the second game, we kind of had a little bit of a stern discussion with them about going up there and becoming more aggressive and letting it rip. And, and I think a lot of guys took that to heart and then we fell behind right away in the game and we had no choice. They, the guys had no choice but to go up there and let's go. And I think when Javen Coleman settled that game down, it gave us a chance to come back. And I think one swing of the bat by Gavin Dugas kind of relaxed the team a little bit. And ever since then, we've, we've just had a lot of confidence. You know, confidence is a very fragile thing in this sport. And hitting a baseball is a very difficult thing to do as well. So when your confidence wanes, it, it shows. And right now, you know, I think the guys believe that they can hit. And all those other things combined have allowed us to, to show what we're capable of doing. Hey, Coach, I wanted to ask you about Alex Brady. I mean, he's really had just the journey to LSU, not how he recruited out of LSU or out of high school, then going to JUCO, and he's really been able to increase his velo since being in high school. I think he was only throwing 75 miles per hour. Just what have you seen from him and how he's progressed as a pitcher? And do you want to see him pitch either tomorrow night or Wednesday? Well, you know, Alex Brady proves something that I have preached for a long time. And that is that the very best pitch in baseball is not a fastball, it's not a curveball, it's not a changeup, it's a strike. If you throw the ball over the plate, you have a chance. There's no defense against the base on balls. And Alex Brady throws the ball over the plate and it gives him a chance. And there's something about those left-handers that even if they're throwing 85 miles an hour, there's, there can be something very deceptive about them. When, they, when they're in the strike zone, I don't know if it's just a little bit of movement and mix it with a change up to just keep them, the, the hitters just slightly off, off timing a little bit can make them very effective. You know, he pitched really well over at UL the other day. I probably left him in a little bit too long. Um, you know, I think, I think it, you know, I gotta, I, I'm just, I'm really just learning about his ability. And so sometimes, you know, you have to kind of, you know, what's that saying about the envelope, you know, you got to extend, you know, let it go a little bit further to see, see what he's capable of. And I got to make sure that I utilize him correctly, but he can be a very effective piece out of our bullpen. And, you know, when he was in junior college, he was his team's closer. So he's used to being in a pressure situation. And I, I think, I think the kid is going to help us a lot. Um, you know, I, I, one of my most fond, pitchers that I've had here at LSU was an undersized, not hard throwing left-hander by the name of Chris Cotton, who came to LSU as a walk-on and became our all-time uh, leader in saves for a season. I think he saved 16 games in, a, in one of our great seasons here. And, um, you know, so the, again, those left-handers can get away with not having the highest velocity when they can change speeds and throw the ball over the plate. I'm not trying to put Alex Brady in Chris Cotton's category quite yet, but uh, I think he can, I think he can continue to help us. And well, you know, we've got, we've got a lot of options down there and I'm trying to get a lot of guys some mound time to get them ready as we go through the season. So I'm not sure exactly when he'll be back on the mound again, but I think he'll be ready to go for, uh, you know, midweek here when, if we need him, if not, we'll use him on the weekend. Paul, another one of those left-handers. Bill said you all will be starting Javen Coleman tomorrow. What do you hope to see from him in his first start? Yeah, well, we're going to you – know, hopefully he'll pitch great, and um, we're going to continue to try to extend him. He, I think – I can't remember if he threw four or five innings in his last preseason uh, start. We started him each of his preseason uh, scrimmages. Uh, so, really, coming out of the bullpen against Louisiana Tech was the first time we had used him. Well, I guess we, we used him for an inning on the opening day, if I'm not mistaken. But um, when we brought him out of the bullpen against Louisiana Tech, that was really more out of desperation than it was by design. We were already down five to one in the game and we needed somebody to spark us. And he did that for us. But our intention was always to utilize him as a midweek starter. And uh, I see a great future for this kid. I think he's capable of being a weekend starter at LSU. 
potentially even a Friday night starter at LSU. So um, this will be a, a big start for him, his first start. Um, it'll be a you know big, exciting game for him. I'm sure he's going to be pumped up and you know, we got to make sure we manage his emotions and make sure that he stays in the strike zone. You know, I talked about how important it is to throw the ball over the plate. And, you know, he has a tendency sometimes to get so excited that he gets a little bit, you know, outside of his, outside of his himself, so to speak, he rushes to the plate and then he starts getting a little bit wild and that's not who he needs to be. He needs to be a strike thrower, which he's very capable of being. And if he does that, his stuff is good enough to, to be able to dominate a team. And hopefully he'll do that tomorrow night. And then if I could, we didn't get to see, or, or Matthew Beck didn't pitch over the weekend. Is everything okay with him right now? Yeah, he's been a little bit sore, uh, Wilson. Um, when he threw against UL the other day, uh, I had to take him out of the game. His, he, his arm got a little bit sore. Uh, it, we're, we're cautiously optimistic with him as well. He's been getting better every day. At first, when we had to take him out of the game, we were very nervous about it. You know, he only threw a few pitches and, you know, we, we really were using him the same way we'd used him for four years. You know, he'd throw an inning and then have a day off and then, you know, throw an inning. And I think he, on the third batter he faced, he just felt some tightness and he didn't say anything. And then he tried to throw through it a little bit. He walked those two batters, his command got away from him. And then we took him out and, and he told me that his elbow had tightened up a little bit. So it's been getting better every day. And, and uh, you know, um, he was getting checked out today by the doctor as well. And hopefully we'll get a good report from the doctor as well. Coach, can you, um, I, I know everything's crazy, especially with midweek games and scheduling and moving and shaking and stuff, but this week was Southern. How important was it to just, keep that city game and, and the importance of that, keeping that on the schedule this year? Oh, well, you know, we have Southern twice this year too, Matt. Um, yeah, you know, uh, Carrick Jackson had become the coach at Southern and, and Carrick and I shared a very special, good relationship and we worked together very nicely. And I think Carrick was an outstanding coach over there and was doing a tremendous job. And uh, then he took a job with Major League Baseball. And I was kind of sad to see him go, to be honest with you. I think he and I were going to work together really well in Baton Rouge to keep promoting baseball. And, um, you know, I, I had a lot of respect for him. I still have respect for him, but I just hated to see him leave Baton Rouge. But um, I, I don't know Chris Crenshaw quite as well as I got to know Carrick, of course, but Chris is, and I have communicated quite frequently. And, um, you know, Chris, uh, Chris had some scheduling issues of his own. Their first series to Oklahoma was canceled because of weather. And, um, and I was trying to help him get something scheduled. And uh, I, I had tried to get him to, uh, I was going to let him use our field to play Notre Dame in a game to just get him something because his field is not ready to be played upon. They don't, their backstop blew down in the hurricane, I think. And so um, when Notre Dame was still going to be coming here, I was going to make our field available for him to play Notre Dame. But I couldn't involve them completely in our weekend because we already had four teams. Um, and then Notre Dame ended up canceling and he ended up getting a series over at UNO. So it ended up not transpiring that way. But then when he lost another game, we, or we lost the game with Lamar. I, I asked him if he wanted to play a second game, which he was low on game. So we scheduled a game later on in the year. So, you know, I would expect that we're going to have a great relationship and try to continue to promote college baseball and Baton Rouge together. And, and uh, you know, I know they played Louisiana Tech very tough this weekend. They didn't end up with any victories up there. Uh, Louisiana Tech, of course, opened up their new ballpark, and that was an exciting time up there. But I, I didn't look at the games that closely, but just reading the newspaper article this morning, recapping the games, it sounded like Chris thought they played fairly well, and it seemed like they swung the bats real well, and they had some opportunities that they didn't take advantage of. So I'm expecting a very tough game on Wednesday. But, you know, you know me, one game at a time. So all my attention right now is on the Nichols game for tomorrow night. We don't, we don't know who we're going to start quite yet, Matt, either against Southern. We'll have to get through tomorrow night first and see what we need to use. And then we'll announce a starter as soon as tomorrow's game is over. Bill, you're muted. 
Anyone else for Coach Maneri? All right, Coach, thank hey, you very much. Hey, thanks for your patience, everybody. Did you all see Alex Lang uh, pitch yesterday in the big league game for the Tigers? Today, Hess did. So, got a lot of guys in at, uh, with the, uh, Todd Peterson and um, Cole Henry are in Major League camp. So, it was Kramer Robertson. Greg Dykeman had an at bat yesterday. Um, trying to think who else. There's a slew of guys that are in big league camp. So, I think Goody's it's kind of hard to. Who did? Goody. Oh, yeah, Nick Goody's back with the Yankees. I know he gave up a home run yesterday. Yeah, wasn't. <laughs> yeah, hopefully he'll stick, though. Okay, good to see all of you. Thank, Thank you. you.